Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. A uh, big thank you to my ex for making me so sad that I just threw up because I'm looking snatched now. Yeah, he still doesn't care about how you look or that you threw up. You care enough to want to get him back? Go apologize. That could work or maybe he'll still consider you're the type of person who think it's okay to record a video in front of the toilet. Oh, and yeah, by the way, wash your mouth. It's my ex's birthday, so I text happy birthday. He texts back, thank you, Miss Grace. I read it as thanks, miss you, Grace. So I text back, miss you too. He texts back, uh, close enough. And here I was thinking they always come back. Oh no, wait, that was the crazy queens from TikTok. You do not want to be my friend on TikTok. You do not want to be my friend on Instagram. You do not want to open the realm of what it means to sending me TikToks or sending me reels on Instagram. Guys, if there's one thing about me, if we are friends on TikTok or on Instagram and you've made me feel comfortable enough to where I can send videos to you, I'm going to send you every single day, at least five times a day, ask your friends which blank you are. I just came across a video, ask your friends which act of humanism you are. Does that come on like a normal, like a normal for you page? I don't think so. They're my favorite videos to send. Ask your friends which character you are from Shrek. Ask your friends which Tinkerbell fairy you are. Ask your friends which city you are. Guys, am I Lisbon? Am I Paris? Am I New York City? I love those videos so much. I love them. Ask your friends which color you are. Another one that I love, your month, your blank. Your month, your house. Your month, your monster. Your month, your fridge. And I get a whole fridge full of pickles. Those are my favorite kinds of videos on TikTok. And no, we cannot be friends. I mean, I knew that from the beginning of the video, but I wanted to see where do you end up with this. My month, my fridge, because you like pickles? <laughs> okay. Some people really do need to get off TikTok and return to real life. And for so many other reasons, but including this one, I do hope they get rid of TikTok. Alright, I think it's time to read what she said. Getting my unhinged sparkle back. Oh, thank God, I thought that was sparking soon. I just wanted a couple glasses of wine to take the edge off. It brought an edge I didn't even know I had. Oh, that explains the unhinged sparkle from earlier. Yeah, a few glasses of wine will do that trick. Go on a scale from 1 to 10. Oh, a 6. Oh. Hi, baby. Uh, you're friendly, older millennial. It's um, it's always a 10. Every woman. Always a 10. One zero. Yeah, I can understand why you choose to believe that, but no, it's not. Maybe if we start from zero, some of you would be one, some of you would be zero. Always a 10? <laughs> Come on now. Guys, do you remember the guy that I talked to you before I got back with my ex-boyfriend and we stopped talking because someone posted him on are we dating the same guy and or his ex-girlfriend posted him actually and it was like a whole thing I was like what like someone said they had red flags and so I messaged them and I said hi like I'm dating him like what are the red flags just to be cautious just to be safe I don't know if you guys remember that um, I actually really liked him and then just kind of hit the fan, which I think was the ex-girlfriend's intention the entire time. Anywho, I haven't seen him in months since we stopped talking and I ran into him last night. He did not look happy to see me, <laughs> which is fine. Like, it's fine. I understand, but like, but like, what did I do to him? Nothing, I don't think. Anyway, drunk texted him and said he looked good. I'm going to run into moving traffic now. Ah! <laughs> 
Okay, have fun. I've heard crows in your eyes before offers an even better experience. What did you do to him? Probably quite a lot if he was not that happy to see you. But let me make sure I got this right. His ex posted him on are we dating the same guy to ruin his chances on finding someone else? And you chose to believe her over the way he was treating you. Well, congratulations and yeah, I would probably turn to drinking too if I was you. Men can actually and categorically ruin your life. So we're sitting down saying, Yes, and a good man can still be bad for you. It is so easy to assume that when we say that men can ruin women's lives, we are only talking about toxic men who disrespect women when that is not true. Good men who have different expectations for relationships than you do, who have morals and values that don't align with yours, who want to live a certain lifestyle that you are not interested in. Those men are also a danger to your life. Which brings me to my next point, which is that having this mindset that all men are trash while still being open to the idea of being in a relationship in the future is doing a disservice to yourself. Because when you meet a man who is a decent human being, it is going to be that much harder to figure out whether you two are actually compatible or if you are just not used to a man treating you with bare minimum respect. And I start to believe it's the nose ring. You probably should not have metal so close to where a brain should be. A man who doesn't have the same moral values as you, moral values are not that different. You either have them or you don't. A good man treating you with respect can ruin your life. How? She never got to that part because she was too busy trying to frame it as even good men are trash. If it's not something in the water, it's definitely the nose ring. I'm truly convinced that the reason why there's so many guys that blow up on TikTok for being attractive is because out in the open, in the real world, there's so many beautiful women. There's not one time that I go out and I don't see beautiful women, plural. I think about this a lot. Like, this is low-key my actual Roman Empire. Ratio of attractive men and attractive women is way off. We are so used to seeing beautiful women off screen, so it takes a lot more for a girl to blow up than their looks. Funny, we need to be creative, plus being attractive. Like, guys, where they just lip sync, not even fully lip sync, just watermelon 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 with their lips they blow up for being attracted but all the time when a guy was up on my for you page and he has like a million followers because it's like a million followers for just lip singing to a song that's insane so he's thinking you're attractive. And yeah, I'm sure the 0.5% of OF girls that are making good money are making it because they're creative and they have a stunning personality. Come on now, princess. Maybe there are other reasons why you don't find attractive men when you go out. One could be that you think you're more attractive than you are. And another one could be that you can't put TikTok down and really go outside. Whatever it may be, it's definitely not because the attractive men are only on TikTok. The entire world is in a mental health crisis right now. And you want to know who's being massively, massively affected by it? Men. And I feel like it's common knowledge that that is because of the huge, huge societal pressures that are forced on men from basically as young as eight years old. That men are big and brave and strong and they need to be the breadwinners and they need to not be sensitive and they need to, you know, Boys don't cry, as the cure said. But we're not living in the 1950s anymore. These are the most out dated ideologies that you could possibly have when it comes to men's mental health. One gender study class later and a new expert on men is born. Those ideologies from the 50s, as you call them, those ideologies was what was keeping men strong. You lunatics tried to change that and that led to universal mental health crisis. And by the way, Sunshine, you're affected more than men. I guess they forgot to tell you that. But unfortunately, it's still stigmatized and upheld in society. But do you want to know whose fault that isn't? It's not women's fault. Like, a lot of men tend to blame it on women. Women don't want to date sensitive men. Women don't like it when men cry. It's an ick when men cry. I've never in my life met a girl who thinks that. It is the fault of men at the end of the day. Because these are stereotypes that were created by and upheld by men throughout history because throughout history the world needed strong men not weak men weak men were not in normandy on did they
Men are holding other men to masculine standards. Great, that's exactly what we need. Men are telling other men not to cry. Great, that's exactly what the young men need to hear. And I get it, you lost your parents, go ahead. If you can't wait until you're alone, go right ahead. But if you hurt your pinky on the side of the bed, walk it off. That is not where men mental health problem comes from. It comes from you yelling at them for being masculine, calling every single trait of their masculinity toxic. Stoicism, that's toxic. Working out, staying healthy, that's toxic. Being financially independent, that's toxic. It's not men forcing other men to fight against biology. It's all of you brainwashed gender study graduates. Anyway, sorry I made this too long. Hey babe, what if we did like this little like role reversal thing tonight? Wouldn't that be kind of fun? Okay, sure, I'm down. Okay, great. Not tonight. I got a headache. Alright, and this is gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.